Malin Automotive is starting to become a very highly talked about stock yet again. This stock started to surface on a lot of people's radar in early 2022 as it did myself when I made a trade in Mullen that I do still own to this day and I will show you guys towards the end of this video. But more recently, you have had some positive developments fundamentally for Mullen Automotives. So one thing that I will point out before we dive into all of the details here is that Mullen has a market cap of about $200 million. They have a total order backlog worth almost $300 million. So their order log is worth more than the company is worth right now. Those numbers don't make a whole lot of sense. That would be like Tesla's order book being a trillion dollars and the company's worth $500 billion. The two just don't make sense. This is leading a lot of people to believe a short squeeze might be around the corner for Mullen Automotives. And that's what I want to discuss here in this video. So if you find anything valuable or any insight that you maybe didn't think about before this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And let me know how many shares of Mullen you own down below in the comment section as well. So let's get straight into this video. Now, Mullen on Friday was up about 2% in regular trading and up about 4.5% in after hours trading. Now, I will tell you, you have seen record high volume on Mullen. You, you've never seen this amount of volume on this stock before. And you're seeing, you know, after the split adjusted volume of 45 million shares to 20 million shares trading hands, which pre before this split would have been like 400 million to 200 million shares starting to trade hands pretty regularly, right? On a almost daily basis, you're seeing this kind of volume. Now, Mullen just did a reverse split. A one for 25 reverse split. And if you guys are unaware of why they did that briefly, let me explain it to you guys. So to be listed on the NASDAQ, you have to stay above a dollar per share for two weeks, consistent weeks in a one year basis. Well, they were struggling to do that. So they had to do a one for 25 reverse split to stay listed on the markets. And we knew this was coming. We've, we've known this for a while. They clearly outlined this in the beginning of, or the middle of 2022, they said, Hey, if we cannot stay compliant, then we'll have to do this split. So it's not like it's new information, right? We knew this was coming. Now that doesn't necessarily change this trade. It just changes the amount of shares that you own and the value of those shares. Instead of Mullen trading at eight cents per share, now it's trading at a dollar 50 per share and you have 25 times less shares. But in terms of a short squeeze, it really doesn't change anything at all now the thing that is front and center and i think makes the argument for a short squeeze here is number one mullen is basically at your 52 week lows it's basically at the lowest price that it's been at since pre-pandemic and there's a reason for that right let's jump into the bear case first and this information is coming from this article from investor place it says is mullen stock worth a second look possibly and it comes down to the cash that they have and the cash burn rate that they are at now mullen has a lot of orders right a lot of order book uh value here like i discussed almost 300 million dollars worth of orders company that's worth 200 million dollars that sounds really good but if they can't bring those vehicles to market and they can't sell those and oblige for that order book then what's it matter if you have a large order book right well this is the problem so mullen they have about a hundred million dollars as of the latest quarter that we just got of capital on hand meaning cash on hand. But last quarter, they reported an operating loss of 73.6 million. That means that they have one more quarter in them and they're going to run out of money. Well, they have one more quarter and they're not going to make it to Q3 of 
2023 unless they raise capital. The problem is they just did this reverse split. And now the share price of Mullen is $1.50. So if they try to go to the stock market, right, to go to equity markets and raise capital, the stock's going to go back under a dollar. So then it's going to be in danger again of going back down to those sub, uh, you know, dollar prices, which isn't going to matter as much because Mullen will still trade for another year if that is the case. But that means you're getting a lot closer to running out of capital, to going bankrupt, to seeing this stock get delisted and essentially go to zero. That's the bear case here. That is like what's going on, why the stock is hitting new lows. Now, the bullish case here is quite impressive. Like I said, Mullen has a backlog of almost $300 million worth of vehicles that people want delivered. There, people actually want Mullen vehicles if they can bring them to market. And even the most recent news that we just got is that Mullen Automotive, they land a $63 million purchase order with Randy Marion Automotive. The automaker said more deliveries are anticipated over time via this cooperation. So even saying that there could be more vehicles that they want in the future this is good this is showing solid demand after all the first thing you need in a business is demand people need to want your products right but how do they bring them to market how do they actually make these vehicles because they're probably going to lose money for a while where does that capital come from that's the problem and that's also the bullish case for Mullen. So I think worst case scenario, obviously the stock's going bankrupt. The company's going bankrupt. It's it's going to zero. Now the valuation is so low in conjunction with the order book that they have that it might make sense for them to get outside injections of capital, maybe from a larger automotive company or for them to be bought out. That is certainly a possibility here. Granted, they have... A larger order book than the company's value right that's just e econ 101 like if, if you had the money to buy amazon or whatever and you had a trillion dollars and they had you know two trillion dollars worth of potential profit sitting on the sideline if you did that deal well it would make sense or do it on a smaller scale right you guys understand what i'm saying here econ 101 business 101 it makes sense so i think that is a possibility and, 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 and that could theoretically happen at any time. But I don't think that's anyone's base case scenario. Due to the stock hitting these lows that we're at, usually stocks don't go down in a straight line. And that's really what has happened lately with Mullen. So the stock has priced in a lot of bad news. We know they have like, Four months left of cash on hand and they're going bankrupt without raising any additional cash so it doesn't take a lot of good news to get a violent rally in companies such as mullen and when you take a look at the ortex data here in which we'll do right now the live short interest are free float. This is a lie. This is not true. You want to look at the official report. Ortex is estimating 8% short interest. The last official reading we got from the New York Stock Exchange from the SEC was released on April 25th, and it had a short interest of free flow at 18.26%. This is likely in the range of 25 to 35% right now. So the short interest is probably a lot higher than this last reported number of 18%. Let's throw that out there. Short interest is likely a lot higher. So these numbers, you really can't take any of this at face value. Ortex says the cost of our average is at 12%. Cost of our max is at 13%. Cost of our minimum at nine and a quarter percent. If you take a look at the option activity, uh, it doesn't even pull that up but but if we look at option expirations for this upcoming week you got the open interest on the call side at 99 and a half percent that that's that's a ratio that you literally do not see 
right? That means half of 1% of all of the open interest for Mullen is puts. 99.5% of the total open interest, the total options people hold in their portfolios are calls. This would suggest to me if Mullen is trading at $1.57, not a lot of people expect the stock to keep going down, right? A stock can only go to zero. It can go higher to infinity, right? So there's not that many strikes to the downside. What is there? The dollars, the dollar fifty strike, the dollar strike, the fifty cent strike. That's it. There's three strikes left for the put side to before it would go to zero. So not that many people are going out and buying puts right now. Like virtually nobody. But there is a lot of option activity towards the call side, which I find pretty impressive, nonetheless. Now, days to cover looks like it's at about two and that's because the volume has ramped up exponentially in Mullen as of recently right and days to cover tends to be a pretty important prospect of of getting a short squeeze and it, it's hard to tell <laughs> where these numbers are truly at because of this reverse split that just happened so take that for what it is these numbers could be totally wrong and totally uh diluted here but they don't look bad in in terms of the short interest likely 25 to 35 percent and just already pricing in the worst case scenario usually when the worst case scenario is priced in it doesn't take a lot of good news to get a ferocious rally in a stock that's i mean stock market 101 for you guys not everything is as it seems so that makes me a little bit more bullish on the prospect of getting a short squeeze with Mullen. If you also take a look at this article from Investor Place, they tend to be pretty positive and constructive on Mullen. It says there are no Mullen stock shares available to short. The last sentence of this article, if this trend continues, both companies could be headed for short squeezes in the near future. And they're also talking about GameStop. Okay. So what's the bottom line, right? Pricing in really bad news. Probably not going to be as bad as what people expect. If Mullen can just survive one extra quarter, I mean, that would probably send the stock up 100% from here. If I were to estimate, right, there's a lot of shorts that are betting on the stock going to zero. Okay. That is what gives you a short squeeze when shorts cover on short positions because the situation changes, hasn't quite changed yet. We're not getting new capital injected into Mullen. We're not getting a better fundamental outlook yet for Mullen, but I could make a case there that maybe it's worth someone else investing in Mullen or buying out the company. At this low of a valuation, any automaker for that part, any automaker that you could think of, right, off the top of your head, Toyota, Hyundai, GM, Ford, Tesla, or anyone else, could easily afford to buy Mullen and to take over their order or order book, order log, whatever you want to call it. So I think that's what fundamentally kind of makes me a little bit more bullish about this trade. Now, let me show you guys my position in, in Mullen, and you guys are going to laugh at this, right? So I had initially bought 500 shares of Mullen in the beginning of 2022 at about 70 cents per share. The stock went up to, I believe, like $5 per share. It went up quite a bit. I sold some calls against my position. I made my position free, right? And I made like two $300 in profit. And I said, well... I'm just going to let this sit here. I'm not going to do anything with it. If it turns into something great, cool. If it goes to zero, cool. And I hate that it don't show the history, so I can't go over kind of the strikes that I sold or how I made this free. I can't do that. Uh, but it does show right here, previous shares, 500. I literally made them free, and they've been sitting in this portfolio for over a year. And my average cost is $17.58 per share. Now I have 20 shares. 
and a total value of $31. Total return of a loss of $320, down 91%. And I bought it at the low before anyone else did in 2022 or be, or before this this company became popular, right? So do I plan on buying more? Not the stock. I, I, I don't want to buy Mullen shares in and of themselves. I think the options are going to be a much better bet if you think a short squeeze is going to happen just because of how cheap they are, right? But the key is you need to be fully prepared for this thing to go to zero or it could squeeze from here and who knows how high it could go, right? And I think the odds are more weighted towards a potential short squeeze here, right? But there is that fundamental risk. If no other company steps in and offers to buy Mullen, or if no other company offers liquidity, or if Mullen has to go to the marketplace, go to the stock market and raise capital to bring their order book to, to life, to start delivering and producing these vehicles on a larger scale, that's more or less where I think you could have downside, right? It's never a good thing when a company has to raise capital and the share price is never rewarded based off that. But in a weird way, everyone's so bearish on Mullen that if they did raise capital, it might be seen as a positive thing. So I think there's so much negativity on Mullen right now that you probably will get a short squeeze in some degree. But is this company ultimately going to survive? That is very hard to tell. Probably not. But could there be money to be made in the short term, the next couple of months? I think yes. So that's kind of my take on this situation. We will monitor this name for you guys if you guys want to stay up to date with what is going on with Mullen, if things change, if details arise. Uh, we'll keep you guys updated because like I said, I do think there is a potential here to make some money with this name but you you, you got to know your risk you got to know your potential reward you got to have your best case base case and worst case scenario and they need to raise capital that's the bottom line so when that happens i'll become more constructive on this name but i think there's a greater outlook for a short squeeze than bankruptcy in the near term Hopefully that makes some sense. Hopefully you guys found some value out of this video. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comments section. Nonetheless, you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.